Welcome to The Conversation, my name is Brendan Malone and in this episode I want to talk about the recently released film The Last Full Measure. Last weekend I finally got around to watching the recently released movie The Last Full Measure. This is a film that has sat on my must watch list for a few weeks now, ever since I managed to purchase a copy on iTunes on sale. I'm pretty happy about the fact that I got it on sale because it actually is a pretty good movie and that's why I want to recommend it and talk about it today in this episode. This is a film that stars some quality actors, uh, guys like Sebastian Stan, Samuel L. Jackson, uh, Ed Harris, William Hurt, Peter Fonda, to name but a few, and the quality of the acting is very much on par with the quality of the actors in this film. This is not one of those sort of budget knockoff movies. It's a film that's obviously working on a budget, and it's not a, a big blockbuster type film, but the, despite the fact that it's managed to sort of sneak under the radar, don't let it fool you. This actually is a film that I think is really, really worth spending your time on. There's one or two tiny little things that I would have improved about it, but overall, this is the kind of movie that I, I really love and that we don't see a lot of these days, sadly. Uh, it tells the true story about an Air Force pararescuer called William H. Pitzenberger, who rescued over 60 men and was killed in the Vietnam War. A very heroic story of heroic self-sacrificial virtue from a guy who went above and beyond, well above and beyond, who entered into a military conflict, uh, into, a, into a battle zone from a helicopter where he was supposed to be operating when he didn't have to do that. And he did that knowing that there was a high likelihood that he was going to actually die in the process. A profoundly heroic story, very beautiful story, and the way it's told and the way the film sort of tells the story and unfolds the story and, and the events surrounding it is really well done as well. Actually, this is what I wasn't expecting from this movie. It's actually a multi-layered film. Now, there are a couple of weaknesses, as I said, before I get into some of the layers and the things that I really love about this film. There was one particular scene at the very, very, very end of the film. It's in the last few moments, and there is a there's a schmaltzy kind of overly sentimental speech that gets given by a uh, an elected official. And it's it's really the only moment where the film just gets into this sort of schmaltzy sentimentality. The rest of the film is not like that, and it's forgivable because it's a very brief moment. We're talking maybe a minute or two at most. Uh, now, having said that, probably other people are going to watch the film and say, oh, I don't know what the big deal was. I didn't see that much of an issue with it. And, and that maybe it's just me, and I have a sensitivity to those kind of things, but it was one little moment for me. But it, honestly, as I said, it doesn't ruin the film at all. It, it's No film is perfect. You know, every film's going to have moments where you think, gosh, I wish they'd improved that, or it's not going to be up to necessarily your taste and what you like in things in a movie. For me, that was one of those little moments, very, very brief and fleeting, and at the very sort of final moments of the film. But as I said, they are minor things, because this is a really, really good film. As I said, it wasn't expecting a film like this, and I wasn't necessarily expecting it to be this good. It's sort of a solid journeyman-type movie. It's not going to light the world on fire, but it's the kind of film that we used to see a lot more of and tragically we don't see much of these days and I would highly recommend it. So here are the things I really liked about it and, and really it's the layers I'm going to talk about that are in this film. So the first layer is the film is actually telling the story about the actual incident that happened in Vietnam. So it obviously focuses on the battle and the men involved and the events and the way that it tells the story is great. It doesn't just preload up front and you know portray the event and then sort of move forward into the future and and uh, and show the events that happened afterwards in the lives of these men who survived instead it weaves the story the battle into the whole film so we keep going back and forth in and out of the particular incident and it, it's sort of it, it's very cleverly done and what that allows the filmmakers and the writers to do is to actually craft into the narrative the stories of individual men who were involved in this battle and and how they figured into it and, and it almost unfolds like a bit of a mystery in places uh, until you so sort of get to the final act of the film and, and, and you get the full reveal about what actually happened which I thought was a really uh, great way of doing things. The, the second layer here is really the, the story about the battle for recognition that goes on here. The, the way in which the men who survived then had to fight tooth and nail when they really shouldn't have had to do this just to get recognition for Pitzenberger and the heroic courage that he showed and securing the Medal of Honor for him, 
despite the fact that this should have happened really from the get-go. And so there's really the men who are involved in their battle and their fight, and Sebastian Stan, his character very much gets drawn into this as well. Then there is the layer of the whole question of Vietnam veterans and the way in which they were treated. And it, it seems to me, I'm not an American, I don't live in America, I have a couple of relatives from New Zealand who volunteered and, and actually went to Vietnam and fought in Vietnam. New Zealand didn't conscript anyone, you had to go as a volunteer and they did do that. But uh, I, I have a sort of a connection in that way, but I, I don't live in America and I don't intimately know men from America who were actually Vietnam vets. But from my reading of things and my understanding of the history and various different military biographies and things that I've read, it seems to me that Vietnam vets are the one group of veterans who have been very badly treated by the sort of the American state after the Vietnam War because there was such a public hostility to that war that that carried over and unfairly the men, a lot of whom were conscripted, who had no choice in the matter, were then targeted after the war. They were forgotten initially, they were treated badly when they first came home. It just wasn't a good thing. And, and so this movie touches on that as well and, and sort of unpacks that. And, and it gives you a sense of these men really as, uh, you know, a small portion of the story is them in Vietnam. The bigger part of their stories is actually what happens to these men after Vietnam and the, the way in which Vietnam veterans were actually treated. Then there is related to that the whole layer and the story of these men uh, confronting things like grief and guilt and it's quite a beautifully told story about confronting grief and the, the really what you might call survivor's guilt from the men who survived this incident and not just them but also the grief of the family members, the, the mother and father of Pitsenberger and, and their story and it's, it's really beautifully told. I, I wasn't expecting this, it's actually quite deep and I think a big part of this is the way that the character of William Hurt, or the character played by William Hurt, the way he interacts with Sebastian Stan, and I think Hurt was just a perfect casting choice, and the, the, his particular acting sensibility, I've really uh, loved his style. He was a, I think for me, when I watched M. Night Shyamalan's film The Village, William Hurt was just such a, a pivotal actor in that film, but the, the sort of this powerful but toned down, uh, but very deep and emotional sort of performance that he brings without being over the top about it and, and sort of schmaltzy and overly sentimental, he still manages to, to explore some deep themes. And you very, very much you've got this sort of performance from Hurt in this movie. And it, and it just it works so well. Then, of course, there's the layer of uh, the character in the story of, you know, the character played by S Sebastian Stan, who is this very self-interested government official at the start of the film, but by the end he has become so invested in this fight. It's really quite a beautiful character arc. It's, it's a character who actually goes on a meaningful character arc. Again, something that I wish there was more of in today's storytelling. You know, people used to understand that this was how things should be, but sadly we don't see as much of this anymore. But it's a really meaningful character arc, and not only is he transformed by the end of the film, but it's really also about him discovering that call to virtue and, and, and getting out of himself and seeking the good of other people. And it's really quite profound. It's It's very subtly but powerfully portrayed as his own war, effectively. This is a type of battle that he has to fight with himself to be a truly good man. Which brings me to the, the, the other and final layer that I really loved about this film, and that's the way in which it unpacks and explores the question of virtue and authentic virtue. And it's, it's just so well done. It, it can be very easy, and there's no shortage of films about the Vietnam War, which uh, focus on perhaps darker incidents and, and, and the sort of the whole nihilism and everything else around that war. This film doesn't do that. It, it actually, and, and of late, I'm really grateful for the fact that we've actually had a few films. I think probably Mel Gibson was one of the first to break this trend with We Were Soldiers. But the, the, the trend now to actually tell stories about the Vietnam War that don't gloss over the darker moments and the things that were problems and issues there, but also at the same time still managed to to give an accounting of the men and the and the brotherhood in this in the midst of this great suffering that a lot of them who were conscripted were forced into, and and I think that's a very beautiful thing. And this film is one of those sorts of movies. And 
the virtue factor is really important here. There's a beautiful scene with Pitzenberger's mother where she is asked at one point early on in the film, well, you know, didn't you ever think about stopping your son, you know, not letting him go and fight in this Vietnam War where he was, you know, eventually going to be f uh, killed prematurely, you know, far too young. And, and her response is just so beautiful. And she talks about this whole concept of, you know, of living out virtue but to be, you know, a truly good and virtuous person, you can't expect other people to make the sacrifice. It's no good talking about, you know, the need for virtue in a way that's actually focused on other people being virtuous, which is often how that conversation happens now, where when we talk about the loss of virtue in society today, generally, we're not thinking to ourselves, oh, my lack of virtue. We tend to be thinking about the lack of virtue that we want to identify in other people. And, and that doesn't work. For virtue and for a virtuous society to really flourish, every individual has to recognize that virtue must start with them. We all must take responsibility. That's really hard to do. It's very easy to lament and criticize other people for their lack of virtue. But in actual fact, what we fail to recognize is that we are part of that society too. And if our society lacks virtue, we've got to ask ourselves, well, what are we contributing to the, the, the general uh, culture and life of virtue in our society that we're complaining about the lack of. And, and there's this beautiful scene with Pitzenberger's mother where she really so beautifully sums that up and says that it's no good expecting other people to make that sacrifice and to sacrifice their kids. You know, it's, it's something we've all got to embrace. And, and it's, it's, you know, it's, it's just profoundly beautiful. This is a film that I highly recommend. It's a, it's a solid story. It, it's not huge blockbuster material. It's a film that is really seen these days, though, a really well-acted, well-crafted story that has something meaningful to say, and it tells it, I think, in a really artistically solid kind of way. It's the sort of film, the, the drama film, that I remember when I was going to the, the cinema every week when I was sort of in my late teens and early 20s to see films that you would see a lot more of, but you don't see much of these days. Through the 90s, these types of films were more the norm and now they're sort of like hen's teeth and so I highly recommend it. It's not another superhero film. There comes a point by the way with superhero movies where we just have to grow up and move beyond them. That You know they're great and they're enjoyable and I've got kids and I enjoy watching them with them but sooner or later the simple fact is if we're going to grow into adulthood and mature we need to start feeding ourselves mythological food if you want to call films that that isn't just designed for children and young people we've got to we've actually got to start feeding ourselves on on grown-ups food and this film is very much uh, what I would call adult food. It's, it's, a, it's a film that actually tells a, a very important story that needs to be told and it tells it in an artistically solid and beautiful kind of way and it, it has real depth and important meaning here. It's the sort of film that not just do you watch and find yourself entertained by but it is a thing of beauty and that beauty draws you into a profoundly important deeper truth and really motivates and inspires you to actually live out that truth in your own life and so for that reason I highly recommend The Last Full Measure. If you can get your hands on it and watch a copy, you should definitely take the time to watch it as soon as possible. Thanks for watching this episode of The Conversation. Don't forget to like, share, and give this video a thumbs up. That all helps the channel. And wherever you're watching, please subscribe. If you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit the little notifications bell as well. That way you'll get updated about every new piece of content that we publish. A huge thank you to everyone who is supporting us at patreon.com forward slash leftfootmedia. For as little as a dollar a month, you can help to ensure that this great content keeps happening. So that's patreon.com forward slash leftfootmedia. As little as a dollar a month or as much as you'd like to contribute. And a huge thank you, as I said, to everyone who made today's episode possible. You guys are awesome. I'll see you next time on The Conversation. <music>